this isn't the video that I planned to make. Yes, the title, the thumbnail, it's all true. I bought The Ordinary's Soothing Barrier and Support Serum because I thought it sounded like a lovely product and, uh, I had a reaction to it. Some of you might be wondering, is this gonna be a video where she says, don't buy this product, it's horrible, I can't believe what happened to my face. No. No, I actually think it's a great product. I think it's an innovative product. I love that it's affordable. I think it's another great product from The Ordinary. But, like I say all the time on this channel, no product is for everyone, and uh, it turns out this product isn't for me. But Alice, are you going to talk about how on the Sephora website, 26% of the reviews from verified purchases have a one-star rating on this product? Oh, sure, we can talk about that. I do love to talk about both science and psychology. Now, sadly, I won't ever be able to review this product because it didn't work out for me, but I thought that I would sit down today and make a video talking about reactions, allergies, because I do feel like this is a very misunderstood topic. So that's the topic for today's video, and I do want to say, if you have tried this, whether you had a good or a bad experience, please feel free to use my comment section to share. I absolutely am not going to be offended if you say this is the best thing you've ever tried in your life. I believe you. I think it's a great product. Before we dive in more on the topic of allergies, I think we should set the stage for why allergies happen in the first place. This is in itself a topic that a lot of people are confused by. So let's make it clear, we're all confused by allergies. The bottom line with allergies is they shouldn't happen. Take a food allergy. You have all of these foods that are a great source of micro and macro nutrients, and yet for some people, they have devastating consequences. I talk a lot about peanut butter because it's one of my personal favorite foods. Ooh, I owe peanut butter so much for helping me with some weight issues I had in my younger years. Couple scoops of peanut butter into a smoothie, mm saved my butt, literally. But in terms of allergies, peanut allergy is a fairly common allergy, all things considered. And when those people eat peanut butter, it does not go well for them. And bringing this back to skincare, let's go ahead and talk about the Soothing Barrier and Support Serum from The Ordinary. I'll go ahead and put the ingredients list up on the screen for you so you can see what a beautiful ingredients list this appears to be. The Ordinary puts so many soothing and calming ingredients into this. It's actually even more than they claim on the Decium website or the Ordinary website. We have one of those synthetic ceramide ingredients. We have an anti-irritant ingredient that is meant to mimic the effects of oats. 2% niacinamide, that is a perfect level for a product that is meant to be soothing. And look at this, no alcohol, no fragrance, some of the things that people really look out for to find a non-irritating skincare product. But what if I told you that I can highlight some of the possible allergens in this product, and uh, even though it is, in fact, a fragrance-free product... Whoa! <laughs> what just happened? Is she saying that these ingredients that she just said were soothing, anti-irritant, those uh, could be allergens? Yes, and that's a lot of what makes skincare so very tricky. Let's dive a little deeper. This is the rabbit hole, after all. How about we start with uh, a focus on that ginger root ingredient? I do love talking about these plant-derived ingredients in skincare because it is impossible for me not to notice that some of these skincare companies are stealing our research. <laughs> There's really not a lot of research into ginger in terms of topical uses, in terms of skincare, and yet, if you Google the benefits of ginger in skincare, which I did, you see ginger has many benefits for the skin and is a rejuvenator that helps reduce signs of aging, flushes out toxins, uh-uh. Oh, uh, I can't, I can't read this anymore. What a lot of brands and websites that talk about skincare ingredients love to do is they will search this in a scientific database but pull up research on food applications. For example, maybe, just maybe, somebody did an assay of blueberries and they found that they are rich in amino acids. And therefore they said, oh, this has a very hydrating effect in skincare, as amino acids do. Well, yes, but you're only looking at a very small part of what's in blueberries. 
I saw Food Science Babe use that graphic and I had to go and find it. Oh my gosh, I love her so, I love her so much. <laughs> Coming back around to ginger, I wanted to give you an example of something I talk about a lot, and that is, again, how much is in each of these plant-derived ingredients. So in this, this is the ginger safety assessment. In the full assessment, they talk about a lot of different ways to make this ginger root extract, as well as different compositions of it. I just pulled out one for an example here. So the first part shows you how you can make this extract, and then the second part talks about some of what's in that extract. And would you look at that, that's some ingredients that I know fellow skincare enthusiasts are quite familiar with, and maybe not in a pleasant way. There's citronellol, limonene in this product from The Ordinary. Well, yes, kind of, but keep in mind, these numbers are referring to the extract, which in this product is probably not used in a very high concentration. So you're getting a tiny amount of a tiny amount of these ingredients. But it's worth applying that to what beneficial constituents as well, especially when articles like Allure and In Style don't quite know what to do with the assays that they've found. So this is all to say, plant extracts, I believe they can be beneficial. I like a lot of them in my skincare products, but it is worth remembering that every time you use a plant extract, you are introducing a whole lot more variables than you see on the ingredients list itself. How about we move to talking about kind of more recognizable, established allergens. For example, this family called alkyl glucosides. This is a family of mild surfactants, and I guess I should take a moment to clarify that surfactants can be used in leave-on products. I kind of see a little bit of miscommunication on that sometimes. Yes, they can be in your leave-on products without causing any kind of problem. However, these are established potential allergens. Here's a pretty good study that was looking at this. They took 5,775 patients, 29 of them reacted to alkyl glucosides. That is a 1% incidence rate, and that's a really good example of the incidence of most allergies in the population. You see, when brands test products, as The Ordinary did, they tend to use a very small sample size. I'll put The Ordinaries up on the screen so you can see. They did their own research with 23 people for immediate results and 34 for long-term results. It can be really tempting to take studies that have 50, even 100 people and say, wow, this had great results, but we would say that's nowhere near enough of a sample size to know how it really reflects on the greater population. That is why the more subjects in your study, the better your study is. And this is where I want to return to what I said earlier in this video. Yes, 26% of the verified purchases are saying they pretty much don't like this product. But there's a few things going on there. If we zoom out and we include the incentivized reviews, which in this case, Per the reviewers, it seems this went out through Influencer. If we zoom out, then we only have 3.5% one-star ratings. And I know, I know that it can be really tempting to say, yes, but Influencer reviews are always overinflated. This is where we get to talk a little bit about psychology. You see, people tend to only leave reviews if they really hate a product or if they really love a product. At the end of the day, most releases that make it to market have been through testing. Should it have been through more testing? Probably. But they've been through testing to know that most people will probably like the product. As you saw, allergies occur at a low incidence rate. That doesn't account for people not loving, I don't know, the color or the texture of the product. So 3.5% is probably a pretty realistic portrayal of how many people actually don't like this product. Returning to our discussion of allergies, I think it is really tempting, and my brain wants to do this as well, to look at ingredients lists of products that we reacted to and figure out what ingredient in that list caused the reaction. As tempting as this is, be really cautious with it. The best way to really know what your allergies are is to have an allergy panel conducted. Otherwise, it can be really tricky to figure it out yourself. You might uh, falsely attribute another ingredient to a reaction. This happens all the time. 
And before we end this video, let's talk about the pink elephant in the room. So a lot of what is so interesting about this new release from The Ordinary is that they are using a form of vitamin B12. It makes sense. We talk about other B vitamins in our skincare products, panthenol, niacinamide. In all truth, though, for as much as I love The Ordinary, and I really do love The Ordinary, I don't want to, you know, use their low prices to overlook some criticisms that I might have for more expensive brands. So let's get this out of the way. There's really not a lot of research yet looking at this ingredient in a topical sense. We've worked a lot with B vitamins in nutritional science as well as food science, but in terms of topical applications, there's just not a lot of research. So let's talk about what they're doing with this. Cyanocobalamin is a form of B12 that we commonly use over here in the US. They use a different form in the UK. Cyano, meaning cyanide attached to cobalamin, a cobalt-based big molecule, by the way. <laughs> and yes, it is red, which ultimately means in a product like this where it's pink without any added dyes, there's probably a lot of it in this. What I would point out here, and again, this is relevant to supplementation as opposed to topical applications, but it is true that we are aware of cobalt allergy as an issue in terms of supplementation. Cobalt allergy can coexist with copper allergy and nickel allergy. And again, since we just don't have a lot of research on this in terms of a topical application, could that be a potential allergen in this product? Maybe, and it is worsened by the fact that if you, like me, use the presence of your skin turning red to determine whether you are reacting to a product, it's not very helpful that the product itself is pink. So that's just something to keep in mind, and again, why we say more research is needed. Let me try to be clear here that, again, I think this is a product that most likely will work for the vast majority of people, and I am not doing this video to figure out why I reacted to this, the bottom line is I don't know, I just did, and so I won't be using it going forward. But I did want to end this video by going back to those Sephora reviews and taking a look at a five-star and a one-star review, and maybe hoping to, uh, help answer their questions. Here we have a five-star review that says, I'm baffled by people who didn't love this product. Perhaps their skin didn't need repairing. I think this is a great review, but I do want to address that Maybe it's not that their skin didn't need repairing. Maybe some people really did have an allergic reaction. No matter how good a product is for some people, there will always be somebody for whom it did not work. And it's that simple. Don't worry about trying to figure out why. Just accept that and I promise you, your life will be so much easier. And here we have a one-star review that says, if you have dry, sensitive skin, avoid at all costs. It will 100% give you a breakout or chemical burn. You see how many people didn't love this review, and that's because, no, not 100%, no, not, not 100%, you are an in of one. <laughs> Speaking in extremes is always dangerous. We have to make sure to have a much more balanced approach to the reality of skincare. And my friends, that's all I wanted to share in today's video. I hope it was helpful. I hope these kind of conversations help people to understand why it is that we do have different experiences with products. As always, again, I invite you to share your thoughts, share your experiences in the comment section below. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.